Hey, uh, how many of you are, have just been growing a little bit from this series called Blind Spots? Anybody? Just maybe some areas that you've recognized. Hey, you know what? I, I didn't see that before, but now I, I know that it's there. That's the whole point of this series is because there are some threats in your life and in my life that could really ruin the future you, and we want to see God's blessing on our future. Amen? And that's what we want. And so we've been going through this series called Blind Spots, and we're looking at the life of this guy named Samson. And the thing with Samson is that God gave him some supernatural strength. God wanted to use him. He actually told him this and also his parents, that Samson is going to save the nation. He's going to be the deliverer. Because at that time, the Israelites, they were enslaved and they were in bondage to this country, this nation called Philistine. The, Phil the Philistines had dominated them. And so he comes to his parents, this, this angel comes to his parents and, and also begins to put a blessing on him, a supernatural power on him. And he says this, God says this, that I, he is going to be the, save, the savior. He's going to be the one to save and deliver the nation. Except we look at his life. And we see several areas in Samson's life where he had blind spots. And with all this great potential and all the things that God wanted to do and promise, and he actually seen some of this stuff happen, Samson had some blind spots. And he missed some things. He missed, we talked about the first week was hidden potential. Sometimes we just miss the potential that God has like he had potential. We have that as well. We talked about a, a sense of entitlement to where sometimes we're just like, I should have it because I want it. And in areas of our life, that can creep in. We talked about careless choices, and I can do what I want. It's my life, and so we just make these choices. We just kind of buck off anything or anyone or God because I want to do what I want. And so today we're going to look at this uh, message, and probably more towards the Christians today I'm speaking to, is that you can lose the fear of God. That you can lose the fear of God, and this can prove to be a serious blind spot. And so, just like you have blind spots when you're driving, you have your rear view mirrors, and you're trying to find out if there's a car next to you in another lane before you switch over. That if you're not careful and looking over your shoulder sometimes and looking at the blind spots, you can move right on over and you can end up hitting, crashing, having an accident, having destruction. And that's what can happen in our lives if we're not careful with these blind spots. And we have to be willing to say and acknowledge that I've got some blind spots in my life. I do. We all do because we're human. And so here is this great promise that God had given Samson. And so here was the deal with the supernatural power that God was going to use and, and move through Samson to save a nation. He just had to keep a vow. He just had to keep a commitment to God, and as long as he did, God was going to use him in a powerful way. And so it was called a Nazarite vow. And a Nazarite was someone who was separated to God, and there were three things that you needed to do to make sure that you preserve this, this great uh, power from God in his life. And the first one was simply this, is that you couldn't drink any hard drink or, or liquor or alcohol at all. Another one was you couldn't go and get near, uh, be near any type of dead body or anything dead. And then the last one was is that you couldn't cut your hair. He needed to let his hair grow all of his life. And we seen a couple of weeks ago with careless choices, he just violated a couple of those parts of the vow, parts of the commitment. And today we're going to look at the story where we've heard of the story maybe of Samson and Delilah and how he only has one part of this commitment left. And so what is Samson going to do with this part? It's going to be tragic and it's sad what happens when we lose the fear of God. And my heart for you is that you wouldn't lose a fear of God. You would maintain that so that you can have everything that God has planned for you. Because when we sidestep the fear of God, and we're going to explain what that is, we end up missing out on everything. And we hurt ourselves, the future you, and I don't want you to hurt the future you and the life that God has already laid out and planned for you. There's this uh, guy back in uh, back over the kind of in the 90s going into the 2000s. His name was Ronnie Coleman. And he was a bodybuilder and Ronnie Coleman, he dominated the bodybuilding world uh, for eight years. He was Mr. Olympia for eight years. He kind of looks like me a little bit. I didn't want to take my shirt off and make him look bad anyway. But but here was, people are like, does he really look like that? Wow, no, I'm just kidding. No, you know, I don't. anyway. So, but Ronnie Coleman, he, he dominated the bodybuilding world for eight years, he held the record with Lee Haney, 
And it was amazing, the contest, they would talk about how this guy was massive. He was bigger than most. I mean, it was incredible the strength that he had and the way that he looked and sculpted his body. But here's the thing with Ronnie Coleman. He had some weaknesses, like we all have weaknesses. And today, I just seen a documentary just a week ago where Ronnie Coleman has injured himself so much because of the weight and all of the constant working out. He's around 50 years old now. That his body is broken down. He's had several pieces of metal and screws and bolts put in his body. There's a time where he had to have surgery on his back and he had to literally learn how to walk again. He's had surgery on his hips and the doctors have told him this. They've tried to get him to stop working out like he had before. Is it because they don't want him working out? No, it's because they care about him. And they want him to do well. They want him to have a quality life for the rest of his life. And that's how God is with us. God has a a great life planned for us. But if we're not aware of the weaknesses and the blind spots in our life, man, it's going to ruin some stuff, some relationships, some opportunities. And it's going to mess us up. And so we need to make sure we maintain this fear. Everyone say fear. Fear. This isn't to be afraid of God or, oh my gosh, what is he going to do to me? God's out to hurt me, hunt me down, catch me doing wrong. That's not the fear we're talking about. We're talking about a fear that is so reverent and respectful of God, that he carries weight with us in everything he says, in everything he directs, that I have this great respect and reverence for God. I would even say it maybe a little more practical for us that I would literally take God serious. That I would take him so serious that I'm willing to cooperate and align my life according to what he says. I would take him so serious that when I, when I read the Bible, man, I want that to be in my life because I know God's going to use that in a great way for me. I want to be able to, when God speaks to me, I, I want to be able to have that fear and respect and know that God's going to use that for my betterment, for what he wants to do. But it, it, if I don't have this fear, if I don't take God serious, if I don't cooperate and get in alignment, man, things aren't going to go well. That's how it was for Samson. So the question for you is, how serious do you take God? How serious? When you read, you learn, you hear things about God and his truth and everything. How serious do you take him? Because here's the thing that happens when we don't take God serious. Is that we don't value him. And when we don't value God, we just kind of cast him to the side. And instead of making him the priority, we make him what we would say a priority. And many times when we say a priority, I don't even know if he's a priority. It just kind of sounds good that like he's here. I kind of go to church a little bit and he's in my life to some degree. But Samson didn't make God the priority in his life. See, either there's a saying that goes like this, either he's Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And so He's got to be the priority in my life. The way that I show that I have a fear for God, a deep respect and reverence, and I take him serious, is that I say, God, you are the priority. The direction of my life, it is my priority when it's in you. The way I talk and where I go, how I act, how I behave, how I respond. God, everything is going to be in alignment with you because you are the priority. But if he's not the priority then we're going to see this fear of God fade and we're going to see our weaknesses take over our life and that's what happened with Samson. He went through this painful journey and it was tragic because he lost the fear of God and today we're going to read through this tough story. It's tragic, it's painful, but we can learn from his mistakes so that we don't live those out. Everyone say amen. 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 So open your Bible this morning. We're going to look at Judges Chapter 16, please pray for me. My voice is uh, kind of dry and I'm having a hard time here. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, chapter 16, it says this. Samson went to Gaza. Everyone say Gaza. You may have heard about the Gaza Strip over in Israel uh, on the news at times. That's what it's referring to. Samson went to Gaza and there he saw a prostitute and he went into her. I don't need to explain that, I hope. Uh, the Gazites were told, Samson has come here. And they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, let us wait till the light of the morning, then we will kill him. 
But Samson lay till midnight, and at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and pulled them up, bar and all, everything, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Everyone say Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, seduce him and see where his strength lies and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to humble him. And we will teach or we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me what your great, where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that one could subdue you. And so she goes on with a a series of asking him and Samson playing the games like he always does. Samson says, well, you know, if if I was to be tied up with this strong um, wooden rope that they talk about in here, and I'm kind of skipping through this, um, but if they tie me up with that, they bind me with that, then I can't be free. And so in the middle of the night when he's sleeping, she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you, and they're going to come in, but when he gets up, he breaks it. He was lying to her. Then again, you know, she's like all devastated. I can't believe you did this. I thought you cared about me. I thought you loved me. And why don't you tell me the truth? So he says, okay, okay, okay. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the truth. Then he goes on to tell her, if I get tied up by ropes, I'm not getting free. And it happens again. The Philistines, she says, the Philistines are upon you. They're coming. And he breaks free again. You're lying to me. You're not telling me the truth. And on and on it goes. And so he says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the truth. And he tells her another lie. And he says, look, he, and he gets a little closer to the vow, to breaking the vow. He says, if someone was to braid my hair and weave it together and then nail it down to the, a plank or a wall or whatever, I won't be able to break free and then I'll be subdued. And so she, in the middle of the night, does the same thing. He's laying in her lap and uh, she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He breaks free. And it was another life she finds out and she's heartbroken and upset. And then she goes again and say, why don't you tell me, tell me the truth. And then it gets tragic here, and we look at the next scripture, skipping ahead in verse 15. It says, and she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart and said to her, a razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands She made him sleep on on her knees, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. Again, she shouted, and he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know it was tragic because he had lost this fear of God, playing games, operating in his own strength. And this is where, you know, the fear of God, it doesn't automatically happen. No one says, I'm sick of God. I don't talk to God anymore. I'm not having anything. No, no one does that. It, it goes kind of in stages, bit by bit. And I would say it, it's kind of caught up in this phrase, and maybe you've caught yourself thinking it or saying it. But this is kind of the spirit that comes in side of each of us when we begin to move down this road of losing a fear of God and it's simply this I can handle it I can handle it I I got this and what happens is is there's a little bit of pride that comes up and we think that we're invincible you could see here in reading this story that you could agree that Samson looks like he is just feeling he's invincible now, I know everybody else, they would succumb to this, and, and they would have hardship, and they would fail, and I know that, but not me, I, 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 can, I can handle this. Yeah, 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 I know God's given me this special uh, supernatural strength, I know I, I can handle this, God, I'm okay, I, I, can, I can get through this. 
And that's what happens with us sometimes is that we just start traveling down that road and not understanding there could be a train wreck ahead and we're ruining the future you and the future me. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to learn this morning a couple things on how you and I can lose the fear of God if we're not careful and become like Samson and him come to the tragic end of he did not even know. He did not even know God wasn't there. And I, my heart's kind of tender this morning because I don't want any of us to ever get away from this. I want us to hold this. And so I may be in more teaching mode today than usual. But the first thing that we see with Samson, and it's very clear, it's just seen over his life and especially in this instant, is that we, we uh, overestimate our strength and we underestimate our weakness. We, over, oh, I'm strong. Oh, I can handle it. We overestimate the strength, but we underestimate the power of weakness. And this is what the enemy does. He had the enemies of the Philistines coming, the enemies against their nation. We have an enemy called the devil from the gates of hell who wants to come and he wants to destroy us. And this is what he does. He comes to build you up so he can tear you down when God wants to tear you down to build you up. The devil wants to build us up to tear us down and God wants to tear us down to build us up. Samson was built up. He was invincible. He thought he had it all together. I can handle this. I can take care of myself. Don't worry about me. And he ended up getting a little puffed up. There's a scripture that says pride comes before destruction. Things go bad when we just think we can handle it. And so the enemy wants to give us some ego. Ego, E-G-O, edging God out where we just kind of turn a little bit, I got this. I, 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 can, I can handle this. I, I'm, I'm not going to be the one that succumbs to this. Don't worry about me. I, I can rise above. Oh, others may have this problem, but, but not me. Church, folks, that's a blind spot. Yeah. It's a blind spot. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't trust myself. I don't trust my flesh. I don't trust my human ability. What I trust and what I need to rely on and lean to is the power of God to come through and walk with me and give me victory in my life. Yeah. That's a good place to say amen. Everyone say amen. amen. That's what I need and that's what you need. And we see, we see this Samson guy just overestimate his, his strength. And he ruins things for himself. The first um, way, there's kind of a pathway here where he starts walking down this road, is that Samson was always alone. Samson was always alone. In the beginning, his parents said they, they tried to correct him and help him go in the right direction. Samson said, punt that. I'm going in a different direction. I'm not listening to you. And we see Samson. He's walking down. He's, he's uh, you know, get, getting some prostitutes, going into prostitutes, partying and all these things. But Samson never had anybody walking with him that would check him. Hey, 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 dude, do you, do you know the plan of God for you? Like, do you know what God, see this, stop it, cut it out, get away from it. He never had anybody in his life. And the one tragic thing that I see that we can look through this whole story up until now especially is it never talks about Samson in a relationship with God. It never talks about how and Samson walked with God. It doesn't say anything about, and Samson prayed. Or Samson looked to the Lord, or Samson referred to the law of God, or, or Samson cried out to God. It never says anything like that, because Samson, I can handle this. I got this. And so he went all alone, and when he went all alone, he just broke through all these barricades that if he could have avoided if he wasn't alone. And the same thing can happen to you and I. If we just think, I can handle this, I can do this thing, I can be a Christian on my own. No, you can't. You're going you're gonna to suffer hardship and pain, and you need someone who loves you enough to say, stop it, cut it out. Yeah. Right? I need that in my life. We can't have this mentality, uh, don't, don't worry, I can handle this, I got this. Another thing that he did was, he doubted defeat. He doubted defeat. There is no way that I can be defeated. He goes into this city called Gaza, and the definition of Gaza is strong. 
He went to the strong core of where the Philistines were with the mentality of, but I'm strong enough. But I'm strong enough. And you heard them say to Delilah, they say, look, bring him in. We're going to surround him and then we're going to ambush him. We live in a culture today. We live in a, a society today that is ambushing us. It's ambushing us with different mentalities, lifestyles, language, visuals. And if we just think, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to be that. But we go and we dance around and we position ourselves in that. You're setting yourself up for an ambush. And so am I. And we need to position ourselves in a place to where, no, man, I'm going to see God's victory in my life. I'm not going to just take my future in my own hands and I'm going to do what I want and I need God to bless it. I need him to get on board with me. I can handle this, God. You need to hook it up, dude. Right? I'm going to tell you a way that many get caught up in uh, doubting defeat is that you're successful. It's a danger. Success is a danger because I've been so good this far. I'm, I'm good, God. I'm good, and so we end up thinking we're so successful, and we end up in a train wreck. Another one is, is that can be dangerous for us in a blind spot is that we're so good at doing Christian. We're so good at, at Bible. And here's the truth. Can I just be real? I'm going to talk to the Christians right now, okay? Uh, let me just talk to you for a minute. Is that I've seen many people who know their Bible, but by the way they live, I don't know if they know Jesus. I'd rather know Jesus and be dumb when it comes to the word of God and, and fumbling over and trying to figure it out. But Jesus, be Lord of my life. I'm going to be defeated if you aren't. There's a saying that says this, is that uh, Christians are educated way beyond their obedience level. I need to be obedient. That's where I find victory in my life. That's where I find it. And so he doubted defeat. Then he moves on and you know what he did? Here he's got this woman She's fine. She's hot. He's chasing her down, but she's out to get him too. And Samson self-deceived. He deceived himself. I think what was greater than the deception that she brought into his life, oh, co hey, come on, and you know, I just want to love you, and she's there to, you know, to give her heart to him somewhat, but she's out to play tricks on him, that Samson would actually believe that, no, 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 it's going to work out. We're going to be fine. That he wouldn't know and understand like she's betraying me. It said that she pressed him hard day after day. And for Samson to think she's doing it for my good. We're going to have a tight relationship, man. We're going to be together. That's not what it was. And you know, Delilah's name actually means one who dwindles or weakness. She was his weakness. And he just deceived himself, which leads in the next one is that we become, and he was lust driven. He was lust driven driven he was pulled to her and when we're going down this road of overestimating our strength and underestimating our weakness we get to a place to where i can handle it turns into i've been handled yeah. and now i can't get out of it and it says samson loved her we use the word love but it comes from a hebrew term that is ahab which means lust he lusted after her and we can lust after stuff. We can lust after a lot of stuff. And we've got to be really careful that we understand there are traps in our life. They're going to pull us if we're looking after our own ambitions. There's a scripture I want us to look at here. Back, uh, just let's go back to the other one here in 1 John 2.16 real quick. We'll go to the other one. It says, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions, look at me. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. That's what is driven. That's what's pulling us. That's what was pulling Samson. In the Message Bible, I like the way it, it says this. It says, here we go. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, and wanting to appear important, has nothing to do with the Father. Check this out. It just isolates you from him. These things, these, these desires, these longings like Samson had, it just, it just pulls me further away. And what happens is, this is real important because this is where the, the clincher happens, where we get locked in, is that our worldly passions divide us from God to our demise. Our worldly passions 
the desires of this world, you just read them. I want to get things for myself. I want to have things for myself. I, I want to go ahead and I want to have that physical relationship. I want to live in a sexuality that's outside of God because I want it and I need to have it now. I want to have premarital sex. I want to have sex with anybody, anything. Where it, it's, it's crazy. And, and then uh, if I want it, I should have it. And, and I like that. And, and I'm going to chase that. And I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that thing. And those worldly passions, it's, that's not from God. And it, those actually divide us. And separate us to our demise and Samson comes to this place to where Samson is broken down and he loses. There's a, a friend that Lori and I had uh, probably, man, 20 years or so ago. And he was uh, beginning to get involved in youth ministry and leadership at a church. And uh, I was kind of going in that direction too. And we worked a part-time job together. And there was a point to where uh, you know, we were discussing, he had an unhealthy physical relationship with another girl, and it was really getting to where it was inappropriate for him as a, as a Christian leader, a church leader. And he was riding that line, getting really close, and I just looked at him one day, and I said, come on, dude, you, you know you shouldn't be going there. And I remember it as clear as day and exactly where we were standing. He said, don't worry, man, I can control myself. Don't worry, man, I, I can handle this. So he went on and he started moving in that relationship and, and got destructive there with his sexuality, his holiness and his standing before God. He was losing the fear of God to eventually, painfully, he ended up having a sexual relationship with a teenager in his youth group. And he is on the sexual offenders website. Because you know what? I can handle this. I, I got this. And that hurt him. It crushed his future. And Samson, it literally crushed his future. And his eyes were ripped out. His life was torn apart. And we have to be so careful. You have a great plan. God has a great vision for your life. And I don't want you to try and handle it yourself. Say, God, I want you to handle this. It's all from you. It's all for you. And I need you to be the one who leads me in my life. Because what's going to happen is these worldly passions are going to get a hold of you and they're going to divide you from God and it's going to be to your demise. And so we have to be very careful with this concept, this idea of I, I, I can handle this. I got this. And so we see here he's taking these steps down, but now it gets serious to where here is Delilah. She says, you're not even giving me your heart. You say you love me. Your heart isn't with me. And if we're not careful, we get into this place to where we give our heart away just like Samson gave his heart away. He gave his heart away, his heart for God. It was clear that was no longer or evident that it was on the radar that he had a heart for God. We've seen it doesn't talk about a relationship with God, but certainly here he is now caught up and tells and gives up all his vulnerability and tender spots that he had with the Lord and he just gives it away. He gave his heart away because he couldn't pull away from this. And then moving a little further, and where he, where he hurts himself even more, is that he took God's goodness for granted. He took God's goodness for granted. He said this, I'm going to go out as before. They shaved my head, but don't worry. I'm going to get up. I'm going to break out as before. And we can have God do some great things in our life and have the plans have the blessings, we can see actually the things that we're good at. We can see the, the areas that we have to be careful of. But if you think you're going to break free on your own, that is not going to happen. We need the strength from God. And here he's giving up his abilities, his talents, and taking God for granted and the goodness that God has. Do you, do you know that God's good to us? God, God's good to you. God has only planned goodness for your life and nothing else. And we can't take that for granted and just say, don't, don't worry. I got this. I can, I can handle it. And then the most devastating thing, the line that just, that just hurts my heart for Samson, would hurt my heart for you, is a line that just simply says this, that he did not know that God had left him. Check this out. 
The Holy Spirit, it says in times, would rush upon him. And in this one little sequence, this one little issue, he dismissed the Holy Spirit from his life. He pushed the Holy Spirit out. And when we say, I can handle this, and I can live this way, I can kind of compromise, I can cross some of the lines, I can live the way I want to live, I'll be successful here, I'll pray some, that God would bless what I want to do. When we do that, we just dismiss the Holy Spirit working in our lives, and it's going to be painful. And the last thing that I ever want for you to experience is that you would say, I didn't even, here's Samson, check this out, not only did, did God leave him, it says he didn't even know it. He's that far. He's that far from losing the fear of God to where he did not even know God was gone. He thought, I'll go out. I'll be the exception. I'll be the one. It's okay. And he lost it because I can handle it. And, and there's, a, there's an important piece that we need to learn is that we can deceive ourselves into thinking, no, it's going to be all right. Yeah. right. And it says in the scripture right here, it's so important. You've heard it many times about reaping and sowing. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God's not going to be made a fool of. God's not going to come up wrong in the end. It says, God is not mocked for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. That whatever you put your life into, if you put your life into your hands, you put your life into things that are away from God, you're going to reap from that. You're not an exception. I'm not an exception. I'm also not an exception to if I live for God, I'm going to have everything that God gives other people when they live for him. That when I sow into my relationship with God, that when I sow into holiness and purity and living right instead of living my way, I'm going to reap from that. I'm going to see God's blessing on my life, and I'm not going to say I can handle it. I say, God, would you handle all of me? Would you handle my mind and my heart and my drive and my direction? Would you handle everything? Because I know when you're handling everything, I'm going to reap your blessings and your goodness on my life. That's what we want. So we don't lose the fear of God. There is a um, few years back, I had this cable, and it's called a fiber optic cable. And what this cable does is it helps with communication. Now, um, companies like Verizon and AT&T, they use fiber optic cable to be able to help with communication for you. And so it's, what it is is it's laced with mirrors all the way through. And so it, com it communicates all the conversation, all the things from the internet, anything that comes through this cable. The one cool thing about it is that you can, you can light up a light to it, a flashlight, and when you do, light will come out the other end if I was to hold it up to you. Now check this out. Samson, it says that God left him. The root word for that is so or, which means this, turned off. See, it wasn't that God like left him, left him. It was that God was turned off. See, we can have the light, the fiber off the cable. We're mirroring the power and the presence of God in our life and have the light on the flashlight is on and it's moving. But there's a point to where when we just step out of the vows and the commitment and we lose our fear of God, he just says, I'm turned off and he turns off the light. I don't want to turn God off. I don't want you to turn God off. I don't want God to be turned off by you. I want you to turn God on. I want when God sees you and says, I've got to be there. I've got to throw my power there. I've got to send my light there. I want to see goodness come out of this person because we're not turning God off. God doesn't want to leave. God doesn't want to leave. But if you, if you go ahead and you say, I can handle it, this, this fear goes out the door and it, it just... It doesn't impress God when we can handle it. And so, how do we get this, this mentality and come to a place to where I'm not going to lose the fear of God? I, I want you to get this. How can, we, how can we live this life to where I'm not afraid of, man, God, are you with me? I'm not afraid of 
man, I'm going to step out of bounds or I'm just going to get off track and I'm going to live in this direction and God's behind. I don't want to be afraid and be in that place of that I'm numb to God. I don't even know when, where, when he's coming, when he's going. I don't want to be at that place. And I'm going to tell you, it's very important. This is in your notes and you need to get this. Is that we would have a heart and a mentality and even utter from our mouth, I need him. I need him. Church, I am nothing without him. I need him. When temptations come my way, I'm nothing without him. I need him. When there are things that seem impossible, I need him. When I'm feeling empty and broken and discouraged, I need him. You know what else I need when I'm successful and things are going great? I need him still, Lord, in my life. When God is blessing me and he's giving me all these great things, I need him to direct me and lead my life. I don't want to lose him. I want to stay close to him. And my heart would be for you and I that we would always say that I need him. When was the last time that you said, Jesus, I need you? God, I need you to be Lord of my situation. I need you to come in and rescue me. I need you to bless everything I do and everywhere I go. I need you. When was the last time? Because I guarantee when we're in that slot, we're in that niche, we're in that place, we don't have to worry about ever losing him. Losing that fear, taking him serious. God, you're the priority. And there's no way I'm getting disconnected and divided from you.